Last July, and months before the next-gen car ever made its debut, Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin rang the alarm bell on behalf of the drivers when they called out NASCAR for its lack of transparency surrounding the safety of the new car. Those concerns were only born after rumors started swirling around potential safety issues with the new car. Multiple sources reported that it had performed poorly in crash tests, with test dummies suffering what would be considered fatal injuries. Before the Cup Series race at Atlanta, Harvick addressed the driver's concerns. In that, in that car. Yeah, you know, the only thing, you know, I think, you know, as we, as we sat in the, you know, the, the driver's meeting that NASCAR had with us to, to show us everything, I think that the, the most frustrating part of the whole process is, is the fact that the safety piece to the drivers and the conversation with the drivers which was asked for by the drivers, um, was had at the very end of, of everything. And, you know, I think as, as you look at that, you know, I think it's just, um, you know, I think the guys driving the cars are, are owed, the, you know, the, at least the, um, the respect enough to at least be a part of the process of, of what's going on. But, um, you know, I think it's, you know, that and the racetrack, and, you know, I think everybody's a little bit frustrated with just how all that's been handled. Fast forward to this year. The next-gen car made its debut in the glitz and glamour of L.A. Since that exhibition, which saw Joey Logano outlast Kyle Busch, the car has undoubtedly produced entertaining racing action on an almost weekly basis, which has generated a buzz around the sport for the first time in years. Unfortunately, it's also consistently produced something else. Big hits. One driver after another has acknowledged this year that those impacts, despite what the data might suggest, are harder, much harder. Joey Logano, Bubba Wallace, and Ryan Blaney have all publicly admitted that they are some of, if not the hardest hits in their respective careers. Yeah, it's, it's been a rough week for me. <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty sore week. I'm not moving as fast as I typically do, but uh, it seems like I can still drive the car fast, at least in practice, so that, that part's good. But yeah, these cars, they, they hit harder than ever. They, they hit really, really hard. They're super solid and it, uh, yeah, it hurts. As we've seen with Kurt Busch, the impact and resulting hurt has been serious enough to sideline him for three weeks and counting. In the last couple of weeks, with Bush's absence being top of mind, reporters have regularly questioned drivers about the impacts. Kevin Harvick, who has suffered a couple of big hits of his own at Fontana and Gateway, has once again shown his veteran leadership and been outspoken about the issue and NASCAR's handling of it. I think when you look at the things that happened with the accident, I think these are the exact concerns that the drivers had from the very first day we saw the car, Harvick said at Indianapolis. There hasn't been a lot of progression other than we changed some of the rear clip stuff. We changed some of the impact stuff. But these cars don't crash like the other cars crash. They're violent impacts, and they feel a lot different than what the crash data G-load is. It goes straight through the driver's body. I don't think anybody really understands except for the drivers that have crashed into something, the violence that comes in the car. This past weekend at Michigan, before Harvick shocked everyone and ended his 65 race winless streak and snagged a berth in the playoffs, the 2014 Cup champion was asked again about the car, and again, he didn't hold back. Um, I don't think you're making enough noise. It's never the it's never the first line item on the on the to do list. So, you know, I, I can tell you from a driver, every time I hit something, it's a lot harsher than any hit that I took in any of the other cars. The only, the only thing I can compare it to is hitting a concrete wall co compared to what it, what it used to be. So, you know, I think, um, you know, that's, that, that's the issue. It's not, you know, you look at the cars and they're like, oh, man, they look great. That's the problem. Nothing flew off of it, right? You know, that's, that's the problem. And all that, all that energy is absorbed through, the, through you. So it feels like you get hit by the hammer and, you know, the car survives. But is that really what you want? Like, you know, you know what I mean? So... You know, I think, um, yeah, the cars are all together, and that looks great, but it doesn't feel great. You know, I, I know that the fix is, is not, is not um, you know, I don't think anybody knows what that fix is, but it's not going to be high on a priority list because it's going to be expensive.
That's a pretty incredible statement by Harvick. Cost over health. If NASCAR executives truly value the product that puts money into their pockets, which are the drivers, then they should spare no expense when it comes to protecting them and ensuring that their health is the number one priority. Until that happens, they are jeopardizing the drivers and the future of the sport.